Uh, the Innocence is a novel about a Jesuit priest who turns detective in order to find the parents of an abandoned baby. But haunted by satanic threats, his church's past scandals, and his own personal demons, his investigation takes him down a twisted trail of murder, fear, and betrayal toward a terrifying abyss. Uh, and I just want to add that if you like mysteries, you'll, you'll like The Innocence. If you happen to be Catholic, you'll love the story about a good priest. If you live in the South Bay, you'll have fun because all the action takes place in the South Bay. Excerpts from Chapter 1. Little Iggy Loyola's life began again when the Cooper Hawks arrived to roost in the magnolia tree outside the front door of our Jesuit home in Riviera Beach. I was reciting Matan during my early morning walk when suddenly something fell from the sky and landed at my feet with a hollow clunk. It was a stark white corpse, picked clean, head and chest and legs intact. The corpse was a large bird, maybe a seagull, perhaps a crow, hard to tell, stripped of its flesh and feathers. I stumbled backward, startled, perplexed. I looked up into the branches, and there among the pale wax blossoms, two young hawks were scuffling, dark brown spotted wings flapping, Simtervit's beaks bobbing, talons frantically grasping to hold on to it teetering branch. Suddenly both birds swooped down right in front of me. The quicker one grabbed his ghoulish prize and lifted off toward a Chinese elm. His combatant followed in hot pursuit. We then uh, introduce a number of the priests who live in the uh, retirement home. And then one of the priests, Charles David, wandered off toward a small study at the front of the house. I sat down and was eating a single piece of toasted European black bread when I heard a loud crash. Seconds later, Charles David came staggering into the dining room. He held a large, round, mottled gray stone in his right hand. His left hand was holding his forehead where blood dripped from a cut near his temple. Call 911, he screeched. Call 911. The stone hit you? Charles David looked confused. No, I don't think so. The blood, window, glass, window glass, I think. Curious, I walked to the front door and opened it. I didn't see anyone. Then I looked down. There on the stoop was a large wicker basket filled with stained, dirty rags. Well, what do you ask? make of this? I asked the others. We stood dumbfounded, looking at the strange basket. When Angela screamed, Chris da Tabernak, she dropped to her knees next to the basket rummaged through the filthy rags and pulled out a tiny, naked body, limp and blue. Jesus, Jesus, she moaned. Il est mort, il est mort. She was crying, he is dead, no. The pathetic little fellow, for the baby was clearly a boy, was not breathing. His tiny body was covered in blood and mucus. His skin wrinkled and puckered, his eyes closed. My heart went out to him. The poor little guy never had a chance. Then Father Thomas tottered over to Angela. He stared at the infant's closed eyes, the infant's silent purple lips. Thomas mumbled the old Latin words of the Eucharist, Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuam in vitam eternum. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep your soul unto life everlasting. He pressed his lips over the baby's mouth. He pinched the infant's nose as he breathed deeply once, twice, three times, nothing. Then again, nothing. Again, and again, nothing. Then there was a soft mewling, jerking arms and legs, a tremendous wail. Thomas smiled. He handed the child back to Angela, who squeezed him to her breast as fresh tears ran down her face. The baby gurgled and cooed in Angela's arms. Father Thomas made a sign of the cross on the tiny little baby's forehead while the Cooper Hawks whistled ominously from their roost in the highest branches of the magnolia.